Hey fishing friend, my name is JC with the Rad Reeling Fishing. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to catch more snook during the day. These tips and techniques will apply to catching them at night, but nighttime snook fishing has a completely different set of rules, specifically day fishing, wading, fishing from the shore, fishing out of a kayak or fishing out of a boat. What I'm going to share with you today, these tips and techniques, these ideas will apply to all of those different types of fishing. Or, hey, you'll catch more snook guys or your money back guaranteed. So here's the deal. The first thing that I look at is tide. I have an app on my phone. It's called Tides, right? It shows the graph of what the tide is doing. I absolutely do not want to snook fish on a flat slack tide. I don't like snook fishing on those 16 hour long incoming or out coin tide days. I like those days when the water is really moving. Snook like them too. This video is about catching more snook. Yeah, you'll catch snook whenever there's not tide. You will catch more snook whenever there is current flowing. The other thing that I look at is wind, right? I download an app called Windy. It will show me the wind speed and the wind direction, and I can look ahead several days and see what it's going to be doing on the day that I'd like to go fishing. That helps me decide where it is that I'm going to fish. Obviously, the other thing that I look at is my radar app which shows me the weather it gives me a prediction of what the weather is going to be over the next few days so I'm not out there in a big old fat thunderstorm right so next up we have the time of day that I'm going to snook fish. I like to be on the water in my kayak or if I'm a wade fishing or if I'm shore fishing, I like to be there right before the sun comes up just as some light begins to crack through the darkness. I like to start throwing lures. If I'm in my kayak, it's always top water, guys. First thing in the morning, the snook bite for top water is on fire most of the time for that first 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or you know, an hour. It just depends on what all is happening with the sun, but that is your best time to catch the most snook, especially on top water. So if I'm fishing my kayak, I have several rods rigged up because you want to have different presentations. I've got a top water, a miradine, a paddle tail, and a um, gold spoon. Now, I didn't mention it earlier, guys, but I'm going to give you a lot of information in this video. This is not the kind of video that you're going to skip through, okay? You want to grab some popcorn, get you a sandwich or whatever. So pause the video right now if you need to because Sit down, guys. Kick back and just enjoy watching this whole video because I'm packing it full of tips for you guys. All right, so I was talking about being rigged up with different fishing rods, right? So this goes to one of my first points. Cast more and you'll catch more. Tampa Bay Fishing Channel says fish more and you'll catch more. So if I approach an area in my kayak or I'm wade fishing, there's a point or a cove or there's a place where the tide is moving really good. I'm going to cast up there five or six times, right? I'm not getting anything. Am I going to move on? No, I am not going to move on. This is a prime location to catch a snook is right here. I just know it. All the conditions look right. It is like right before the sun comes up. I'm fishing a point. There's current moving through there. I'm fishing a cove. I just saw some bait. I make several casts with top water. Nothing, right? I grab my Miradine. I throw my Miradine up there. I make several more casts. Nothing. I may reposition the kayak or I may, might walk around a little bit, but I'm still casting the same area. I switch over to the paddle tail. I switch over to the spoon. I mix it up. I throw several different bait presentations in there. I don't want to be in a hurry. This is prime location, prime spot right here, and it is prime time. It is first thing in the morning. So, yeah, cast more and you'll catch more. Good current flow up in here. Oh, we might get one right here, guys. We might get one right here. Yep, there he is. There he is. He's a feisty little guy. Oh, absolutely love the topwater bite, guys. Thanks for the bite. Thanks for the catch. Go grow up and be a giant. Heck yeah, give me a thumbs up on that one. So something you need to know, snook are going to feed throughout the entire day, but that first thing in the morning, whenever it's not as light, okay, yeah, you're able to trick them a little bit better. They can't see your leader line. They're not going to be able to see the bait as well because there's not so much light in the water. As that sun starts getting up there, especially if you're fishing in clearer water, yeah, this snook gets smart, man. They really, really look at those baits closely before they bite them. I want to talk about retrieving lures. I am so guilty of doing this. I get to an area and I've got structure. Remember this about snook. Structure, 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 tide flow, tide flow, tide flow, tide flow, right? They love hanging out around structure and also find the bait, find the fish. Yeah, you got to look for the birds. 
the birds will show you where the bait's at. Once you find the bait, you're definitely going to find the fish. But you want a fish structure, right? So I'm guilty of doing this. I'll throw my topwater lure up around the structure. I'll put it up by the mangroves, and I'll twitch it out of there maybe 10 or 20 feet. I don't get a hit, and I just reel it all the way back to the kayak. No, 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 no. I have to remind myself all of the time, retrieve my lures all the way back to the kayak. So many times, guys, I get, you know, I'm 30 yards away from the mangrove edge. I cast my lure way up there. I'm retrieving it back and halfway in between there and the kayak, a fish hits it. And then he hits it again. And then he hits it again until he gets it. A lot of times they're just following that, that lure out of there, or they may even be positioned out further away from the structure than where you thought they were supposed to be, right? So I try and retrieve my lures all the way back to the kayak. I have caught so many fish and lost so many fish and had so many strikes right next to the kayak. We're out here getting ready to throw some top water around some mangroves, see if we can catch some fish. And let's see if we got another one up there. He's on it, dude. He's nipping at it. He's following it. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, get it. Oh my God, he, he followed it all the way to the yak. <laughs> now I'm talking in this video about throwing lures, but these tips and techniques apply to fishing with live bait as well. Another very important factor when you're out there fishing is noise. You want to be as quiet as you can. I've got the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120. It's got a 45 pound thrust Minn Kota electric trolling motor, spot lock GPS anchoring technology. But I have to be careful with all of that electric motor power. I still want to be quiet. Whenever I'm approaching a mangrove area or a dock area that I want to fish, I shut my electric motor off completely. I just motor up there really slow and I shut it off. Sometimes I just use my paddle. I'll just drift through the current. If I am using my electric motor, I try and keep it in a very lower speed because noise does matter. I mean, I went fishing with some guys the other day. Yeah, a couple guys in a boat. We had a discussion about does noise really matter? The guy asked me, hey, GC, did you, what do you think about making noise when you're out there fishing? Does it really matter if you're making a lot of noise? I'm like, yeah, we all agreed it was making noise. We get out there fishing. We've got live bait. The guy's reaching the live well. He cooks his bait on. He casts it out, and he closes the live well lid. Wham! The same guy that asked me, does noise matter, all day long was slamming the live bait well lid. Now, it wasn't my boat. I mean, I was able to, but I just thought, anyway, guys, be very aware of your electric trolling motor noise when you're banging around in the kayak, whatever. If you're talking to your buddy, you're fishing a boat, you're wade fishing, you're fishing from shore, definitely noise matters. So many times I have seen fish spook with just a little, little bump on my kayak and boom, they just take off. They don't even look. They're just, I'm out of here. Something ain't right. All right, we need to talk about find the bait. We need to talk about find the bait, find the fish. So find the bird, find the bait, find the fish, whether they're diving seagulls, diving pelicans. Hey, if you are out there fishing and you see a fish bust 50 yards away, pop on top of the water, get over there as quick as you can because that's a school of bait. Those fish are feeding on a school of bait and those, those feeding fish are pushing that school of bait. Don't wait. Don't think for a second that you have time. You need to pedal over there, motor over there, get over there as quick as you can and start casting before those bait fish dive down deep and disappear. And then you don't know where all that activity is happening, happening at, right? But always be mindful of that little flicker, that little glitter on the water of, of bait and irregular and the water pattern might um, indicate there's some bait that, that's over there. Birds indicate there's bait. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So many times I've been fishing and I'm not catching anything, not catching anything, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 I start catching some fish. I go over in that area in my kayak and there's just a load of greenback shiners or glass minnows or something right there in that particular area. So find the bait, find the fish. Just the other day, I was shore fishing, went down to the bridge, walked down, I was walking down to the seawall. I looked down there and there's thousands of little bitty greenback shiners and I stayed back intentionally just to get a good look and I could see the little snook laying in the sandy potholes right near the seawall, right where the bait were. Guys, it works. Find the bait, find the fish. All right, guys, so snook are gonna be moving around all over the place. Just remember structure, 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 
water movement, water movement, water movement. Different times of the year, snook are gonna be moving around to different areas. Right now during the summer, they're heading out to the inlets and the beaches, but that does not mean that they're not in the canals, around the docks, or the bridges that are near those inlets and beaches, right? They're moving all over the place. If there's bait by a dock that's not at the inlet, they're gonna be at the dock, and then they'll just go over to the inlet when it's time for them to do their spawning thing, right? Yeah, or they'll, they'll be at a major bridge that's near an inlet feeding, and then they'll make their way out to the beach and do a little bit of their spawning thing. Why would they wanna be at the beach or the inlet if there wasn't bait? They don't wanna be there unless it's time to do their spawning thing, right? During the winter, snook are looking for warmer water, so they're not going to be out at the beach in the inlets. They're going to be tucked out back in your creeks. They're going to be in the shallower areas where the sun shines down on the water. It warms up the water, or you got a darker bottom. The darker bottom tends to heat up the water more. And uh, yeah, the snook like the warmer water, so that's where you're going to find them during the winter. They're going to be in those areas where the water is warmer, right? I don't want to call your attention to my diagram here. This is a top view as if you were looking from the clouds down. This is a replica, a duplication of an area that I fished recently in my kayak. And I'm going to show you where I caught the snook and we're going to talk about why they were there. So here, this black area represents mangrove islands. You can see little points and coves all through there. This area over here, black, mangrove islands all inside of there. And I got a little oyster bar right here that was submerged under the water. The orange arrow represents the direction that the tide was flowing. That was the tidal flow. And the little pink guys right here, those are representative of the areas that I caught snook in. So notice right here, I caught the most snook and I had the most strikes right here. This little area where the water was flowing through here, it's a pinch point. It's a bottleneck. It's an area where the snook can get staged up. The current is flowing through there and it's going to push the bait to them. Snook are ambush predators. They will hide behind the mangroves like this. They'll wait for that bait to come through them. Notice right here, I got a little circular area with the orange where the current's flowing. When that current comes around a corner, it will create an eddy area. A lot of times bait will get caught up in those eddy areas. So you'll have snook laying out away from the mangrove edge or the structure. Structure, structure, structure. It doesn't matter guys if these are rocks mangroves, bridges, or seawalls, these are the points where your fish are going to be staged up. They're going to be facing into the current most of the time. They're going to be waiting for that bait to come to them. So, so these were the areas. See, I got a cove right in here. I had strikes in here and I caught snook right in that area. I had strikes and caught snook there. I had strikes and caught snook here. Now I want to talk about the positioning of my kayak and uh, how I did some of my casting as I was fishing this area. All right guys, I want to call your attention to my beautiful kayaks. One, two, three, and four. When I came into this area, I came from this direction. I started fishing right here. I started fishing this cove, okay? I always fish the coves and the points. Always fish the coves and the points. So I had an oyster bar here. I'm like, this is this is a primary. I had mangroves right on the edge of the oyster bar. I started casting up in here and right in here. I caught snook and um, I lost snook. So after I worked that area, cast cast more, catch more. I made a bunch of casts in there. I had pretty much cleared that area of any fish. I moved my kayak very close to the mangroves and I started casting in this direction, running my lures with the current all along these mangrove edges. So I'm casting back in here, casting all in that area there. After I finished working that area, I moved my kayak over closer to this pinch point this little bottleneck here. I got my kayak positioned here and I started casting these point areas here where the snook are gonna be staged up in the current. They're hanging back inside of the mangroves back in here. They're just waiting for that bait to come to them. I got staged up there and then my fourth position, as I was just kind of working my way right down the middle of this bottleneck, casting on both sides, my fourth position was here and uh, I did my casting there. So let me just show you what that looks like real quick. So I made 50 casts all through here first. Couple different lures, caught several snook. 
I closed that area out. I moved my kayak to here. Here, I started making casts all over the place up here in my kayak, mostly on this shore, right? So that area is cleared out. I've moved my kayak to position three. I start casting again. I'm still casting this area up here. I'm fan casting. I'm basically hitting the points and coves first. I'm casting the heck out of it, right? I got all that covered. I come through, I've come through here, I position myself in position four, and I'm casting back here again. I'm casting the points. And you guys can see, I literally just covered a whole bunch of area. I casted a whole bunch through that area, and I actually caught quite a few snook while I'm, I was fishing in that area. So here I've got another diagram of a different place. This is your top view again, where um, I caught a couple of snook. This is the catwalk on the bridge where the boats go through. The arrows indicate the direction of the tide. This is where the bridge was right here. Over here, I had a seawall, and right here I had a mangrove island. So I worked my way back around, kind of in this bottleneck, this pinch point right here. These little pink dots right here, I noticed there was some bait working in this area. So I came up here and I started casting. First I started casting in the bait, but then I started casting my baits back across this direction. The current was flowing back here, and so that I could work them right along the edge of this mangrove island. And right there, guys, right there, I hooked up with a big snook that broke me off. He was just sitting right there, the tide's coming to him, the bait's hanging out here, and he's just waiting for that bait to get close enough to him. Well, my lure represented uh, that bait coming close enough to him, and uh, he nailed it. So you're looking for those pinch points, you're looking for that tidal flow, and uh, find the bait, and you'll find the fish. So irregularity and water depths plays a big factor in catching more snook as well. A lot of times you'll see them out there laying in the sandy potholes out on the flats. The current will be coming to them. They'll be facing in the current. And uh, trout do that, redfish do that, snook do that. So yeah, just be aware of any type of a water depth change where you've got a drop off. A lot of times they will hang out in a deeper area on the drop off and they will face towards the bank and they're actually looking for um, that bait that'll be coming by there. Um, I made a video one time called Seawall Snook. I love fishing right next to the seawalls, especially first thing in the morning. Um, Snook and Jack, they have a tendency, to, they like to pin their bait right up against the seawall. So yeah, they'll be hanging out right by those seawalls, guys. So just remember, structure, 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 and moving water. That's just a drop in the bucket of tips and techniques for catching snook during the day. Check out this video right here where I talk about the snook zone, or this one where I give you some snook fishing tips related to snook fishing at night. Thumbs up or appreciate it. Get out there and go fishing. Life is fun. Live it. See ya!